Welcome to Lawn Rush. In this video, I want to talk about chaining up your mowers, securing your mowers to the deck of your trailer. Uh, I like to use chains, and the reason for that is just quick and easy. So going house to house, it's not a bad idea to just be in the habit of just running the mower up the trailer ramp and then throwing two hooks on the provided location from Ferris on the mower and just driving forward and letting the forward motion bind it up and hitting your brake and it keeps it tight. That's good for just going house to house. It's a good habit because if I forget to put on the parking brake, which can happen, if I forget to pull that parking brake up right there, then the mower just kind of floats around the trailer and it tends to work its way backwards and bump up against the gate. And once that happens, it's possible for you to lose your mower because your mower can just hit the back of your gate and it's heavy enough to push off these welds. I actually had this one fail already. Uh, once one of these fails, the other one can't support the gate anymore. I've had this one re-welded and I actually put some bolts in it to try to prevent it from coming off again. But uh, I don't know. It didn't actually drop a mower or nothing. The gate just fell. But I've seen someone actually lose a mower on the road. Like the mower was just sitting in the middle of the road because maybe the parking brake didn't work anymore. And it's just one of those things you never know when your parking brake just gives out on you. You don't know. It could just not grab anymore. They tend to wear out. And then the mower is floating around the trailer. Now, I think worst case scenario is if there's like a rear end, if you ever rear end somebody, then all your equipment goes flying forward off of the trailer toward the cab of the truck. I think that's uh, the worst case scenario. But I like to actually secure my D-rings down through the actual frame of the trailer to just to give it the most amount of strength. That means it's hitting all your wood because it's going through the steel. And it's got some pretty hefty washers too going through the frame of the trailer. Uh, if you can see, the frame of the trailer is actually right there. So all my D-rings generally go through the frame. And if they have to go through a different spot where the frame doesn't meet, then I could just run either an extra 2x4 or something down through the just to cross brace it so it just doesn't pull up on one piece of wood. Uh, to me, it seems like just one piece of wood. It'll just start to lift up that piece, I would think, of, uh, of wood. But that's how I've been doing it, and it's been working out good for a number of years. Now, going down the highway for actually on the freeway at high rate speed, you know, with uh, that's a different scenario. This is just what I would do house to house. Now, for going on the highway, I'll actually go ahead and secure the front as well and just threw some small ratchet straps on it. I could probably use something a little bigger. Uh, I could just use one too. I could just use one ratchet strap. Uh, if I had one that was more in the center or more even straight ahead of one of these locations, then I would. But if I just use one strap, then it'll tighten up and it'll still come loose. But with two, where I just where I happen to have the D-rings, it works out good. Uh, it keeps it tight with just one it won't stay tight now with the 36 i do the chain method and then on the front i just for the highway only normally i just do the chain but for the front i'll put two bungees on front this machine's only like 600 pounds but essentially all these bungees do is prevent the mower from working its way backward and the chains becoming loose on me so those are just there to keep it keep it tight the chain stays tight chain stays taut. I use the hydros to push it forward, lock it down forward, and then bungee it down in the front so that it stays tight. That's just the, all the bungees are doing. Two bungees pulling it forward to keep it tight because as I'm accelerating it tends to work its way back. Now for the push mower, push mower just got a bungee on it. Now the blowers going, going down the highway, I'll probably go ahead and throw an extra bungee on these tubes. I'll go ahead and lower them too. This is a nice thing about steels, but I'll go ahead and just bungee these just in case because I don't want them flopping around. So uh, that's pretty much it, how I'm securing my mowers. What do you guys think? How are you guys securing them? I know there's some new fancy stuff. I like what Ballard 
ink is doing with their uh, thing that goes in the wheel. Uh, that would be kind of cool, kind of interesting. Um, I don't know if I'd be able to get my tension right though on my chains. I could probably set it all up to where that thing grabs the wheel and the t chains in the back get tight. But it's really not that big a deal for me just to throw this on just for going on the highway. Because I, I, I had to get this more from a little bit far away, further than I would like to go. About 20 minutes away. But that was the nearest uh, Ferris dealer to me. So I really wanted to try this mower. But now the PTO is not working right. So I think it just needs to switch. So I'm going to go ahead and take this mower in. But that's why I got it all chained down. But comment below. Tell me what you think. And thanks for watching. Thanks a lot.